Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. The topic for this program is the third chapter of that great Old Testament prophet, Daniel. The third chapter of Daniel is an end times chapter. That means it refers to the times that we are living in today. Because it is an end times chapter, it makes great use of the two main features of apocalyptic literature. First of all, numerology is very important. The numbers 4, 7, 12, 28, and 555 and 666 are end time numbers, most of which are included in this third chapter of Daniel. The second characteristic of end time hermeneutics is that the symbolic meaning takes precedence over the literal meaning. We will also see that in this third chapter of Daniel. Let's look at chapter 3 of Daniel verse by verse. Now before we start I should mention that we are going to find the same three groups who are saved from the Antichrist as Daniel mentions in chapter 11, except in chapter 11 they are called Edom, Moab, and Ammon. And in chapter 12, Daniel adds a fourth group. These four groups who reign in the millennium are the raptured Protestants, the protected Catholics, and the holy martyrs. Now in verse number one, Daniel writes that King Nebuchadnezzar made a huge statue of himself, which is 60 cubits high and six cubits wide. Right off the bat, we see a 6-6 numerology, which indicates the Antichrist. King Nebuchadnezzar is a prefiguring of the Antichrist. In verse number two, we see that King Nebuchadnezzar calls together seven groups of leaders in his country. Princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, and rulers. Notice there are seven groups of leaders mentioned, and he mentions them twice both here in the second verse and in the third verse. Now let's look at verse number four. And a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded that you worship the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now this herald, who says that everyone must worship the statue of the king, prefigures the false prophet, who will require the same allegiance from all of us in the end times to the Antichrist. Now this herald continues that when you hear the sound of seven different instruments, that's when you must worship the great statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. These instruments are the trumpet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, which is probably a earlier version of the trombone, the psaltery, which is probably a zither, the dulcimer, which probably more correctly is a bagpipe, and various types of instruments, which is the seventh group of instruments. Notice again there are seven kinds of instruments here. Now these seven instruments are mentioned four times. Of course both four and seven are n times numbers, as is a multiple of four and seven, which is 28. You will notice in this chapter that the word king is mentioned 12 times, the phrase Nebuchadnezzar the king is mentioned 12 times, and Nebuchadnezzar without a king attached to his name is mentioned 4 times. Again, 12 plus 12 plus 4 equals 28. Now we read in chapter 17 and 18 that the three children of Judah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refuse to worship the golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. They prefigure the Protestants, Catholics, and Jews who will be saved during the Great Tribulation. King Nebuchadnezzar is furious that these three children of Judah refuse to worship the golden statue which he has set up. Therefore he orders them to be cast into the fiery furnace, which he has heated seven times hotter than normal. Now this seven times hotter than normal refers to the Great Tribulation. Remember in the book of Revelation that Jesus is the one who opens the seven seals. 
In other words, the seven years of great tribulation, which we are about to enter into, is allowed by God Almighty. This is a great temptation for all of us. And why does God allow this? Because those of us who pass through this great tribulation period will be worthy to enter into the great reward, which is the millennium, the thousand year reign of peace. Notice that when Nebuchadnezzar heats the furnace seven times hotter, that is the seventh seven. Remember, the seven types of rulers were mentioned twice, and the seven instruments were mentioned four times. So now the furnace is heated seven times hotter, thus the seventh seven. Multiples of end time numbers equal other end time numbers. Four times seven equals 28, an end times number. Seven times seven equals 49, another end time number. And 12 times 12 equals 144 a third end times number. Now in the fiery furnace, King Nebuchadnezzar sees a fourth individual walking amidst the flames along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says that this fourth individual looks like the Son of Man. Some Bible scholars believe this is Jesus. Others believe that this is an angel. Either way, this represents a spiritual individual someone without a body. And thus, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and the person walking in the flames who is in the spirit represent the four groups who will reign with Christ during the millennium. The Catholics, Protestants, and Jews who are converted, they will reign bodily. The fourth group, the holy martyrs, are resurrected at the third coming of Christ, and they join the other three groups but they are in the spirit, just as this figure in the furnace is in the spirit. Now just how do Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego signify the three groups who will survive the Antichrist? In order to find out, we have to look at their original Hebrew names. Now Shadrach's original Hebrew name was Ananias, which means God is gracious. He therefore represents the raptured Protestants who receive a tremendous grace from God to escape the tribulation. The name Abednego was originally Azarias in Hebrew, which means the Lord helps. He prefigures the remnant Catholics who flee into the desert with Mary and are protected on the two wings of a great eagle. That refers to what is helping them from the Lord, the two wings of the eagle. The eagle represents the power of God, as we found out back in Exodus, and in these end times, the two wings symbolize the rosary and the scapular. Now, Meshach's original name in Hebrew is Mishael, which means who is what God is. Now, this is a theological concept and therefore refers to conversion and therefore the converted Jews, the third group who will bodily survive the great seven years tribulation period. And as I said, the fourth group, the holy martyrs, are represented by the Son of Man who King Nebuchadnezzar sees in the fiery furnace walking along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thus we see that chapter 3 continues the same as chapter 11 and chapter 12 in Daniel. All three chapters refer to those four groups who will reign with Christ during the millennium. The raptured Protestants, the protected Catholics, the holy martyrs, and the converted Jews. Again, let's pray that you and I will be graced to belong to one of those four groups. The four groups who will not take the mark of the beast, the four groups who will go through the seven years of insanity, which we will know as the Great Tribulation, and which is prefigured in chapter 3 of Daniel as a fiery furnace. If you would like more information, simply write to the address you see on your screen.